Hey guys, it's time to run through a brand new widget. My name is Steve Harris, and this is called the Infinity Scroll widget. So what it does is it allows you to create an image slider that is continuous and will continue to scroll indefinitely. So as you can see from our demo on screen here, we have this kind of background image and it just continuously scrolls to the side and you can set the timing on this scrolling. So on this example below, this is obviously a faster scroll, but this one uses multiple images rather than one panoramic image. We've got this third option here too, which allows you to do a layered set of images. So what this is, is it's basically two widgets stacked on top of each other, one with a transparent background and one solid, and they're operating at different speeds and at different directions. So it's a really amazing widget, and I think this is a great and really cool effect to be using on your website. And the best part about it is it takes seconds to set up. So let's jump into Muse, and I'll show you how to set this up. So I have a brand new website here, and if I go to the library panel and I go to our Infinite Scroll widget and just drag it out on the page, then first of all, let me just kind of center it here, and let's run through some panel options. So when you open up the panel, the first thing you're presented with is the scroll mode. So you can do a panoramic image, which is basically one big, very wide image, or you can do a multi-image setup. So if you want to include several different images to kind of build the continuous scroll. Those images could blend together or they could not. They could just have kind of hard edges and you could just showcase different images. So to start, let's go panoramic. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to shut off the caption panel. So the caption panel on this demo is just this black area. Now you can use the one that we've included with the widget or you can just make a caption panel yourself in Muse that sits over top of the slider. So for now, I'm going to turn that off. And then under the panoramic configuration, we're going to set the scroll direction. So let's have it scroll to the left. We'll set the scroll speed so you can just jump up and down. In uh, On this one, it's 10 increments. So the higher number is going to be a slower speed. So let's leave it something like 20. Now we're going to turn on the panorama image, and we just need to add the file. So let's go add file, and I have a panorama here already set up. So you can see it's a big, wide image. So let's add that in, okay? And now that we've done that, let's preview this in the browser. So as you can see, it loads. It loads within the box that the widget kind of has on the canvas, and it's scrolling to the left. Everything looks perfect. So other ways to use this widget, of course, include change the resizing options to stretch to browser width so you get a full width kind of appearance. And then you can also set the height of the widget itself. So let's just make this a little bit bigger, kind of more like a hero image, and let's preview that again. So now you can see it's respecting the right and left edges of the browser. It is fully responsive, so you can scale the browser down or view on mobile, and everything looks really great. So let's close those demos out. And let's look at a multi-image example here. So I'm going to change the scroll mode to multi-image. And then when we go to the multi-image configuration, we have pretty much all the same options. Scroll orientation, scroll direction, scroll speed. So that's going to be really fast. Let's go to, say, 50. Now let's enable a couple of images. And the first one that I'll add in here looks like this. So it's just kind of a solid colored background with some items on it. So that's number one, and then let's enable a second one. Let's add that in. And so number two on ours is the same background. So these images are going to basically stitch together perfectly. So let's add that in. And there, we're set up on multi-image. Now, one thing I should point out on multi-image that's kind of unique is you can have a vertical scroll orientation. So if you want things to move up and down very slowly and you have multiple images that you want to kind of blend together to do that, you can do vertical with this, which is really cool. So now that we have those set up for multi-image, let's preview that in the browser. And there you go. And you can see there are no image breaks on our images. So we've kind of done this on purpose with this demo. So now we need to talk about our caption boxes. So I'm going to go back now to the panoramic image. And let's enable the caption panel. And when we do that, we get these two options below on the canvas available. So the first one is the caption panel configuration. So you can set a background color for it, an opacity, the size of it in terms of pixels. So right now it's set to 300 pixels wide. And then the panel offset, this is an important one. Basically what this is going to do is push the panel to different areas on the canvas. So with it just set at 10%, let's just preview it in the browser. And so you can see our caption panel is showing up here just kind of on the right side. 
if we were to go ahead and change that offset to say 40% like that, we should end up with a much more centered caption panel. And there, see it's more centered in the, in the canvas. So let's go back here and I'm gonna change that panel back to be just on the right side. So we'll go back to 10. If we set it to zero, it'd be touching the right side. Now we have panel left and right padding. So on our demos, what the panel left and right padding is going to do is control the padding in between the content within these boxes. So right now, by default, it's set up at about 40 pixels, I believe, and that should be good for now. So that looks good. So now we just need to add some panel content. So we can add a title, and you can add a title in there. Let's go with Muse Themes. Of course, set your font and your color. Right now, we'll set it white because our content panel background is black, so that's okay. We can set a size. And then we can also add a description. So right now, we've just got some lorem ipsum filler and the same style options below that. So let's preview that in the browser. And there, so you can see it's showing up. Obviously our headline title is too big. It's wrapping in that box. So another option for you to include this type of content is on the widget here, I could just simply turn off the caption panel and just use this as a slider, no problem. And then what you could do is just manually create a content area. And that's going to give you a lot more flexibility. So if I go black on there, I just drew a box, we'll make it a little bit transparent. And then what we could do from there is just add our headline in manually. So we could say Muse Themes. Again, I'll just style that type a little bit. So let's go white and I'll change the font. We'll go Proxima Nova because it's right there and increase the size. Okay, and let's just preview this in the browser and see how it looks. So it's basically the exact same thing. You just have more control. We wanted to put it into the widget as an option, but for the most part, you'd probably add content yourself directly in Muse. So that's how you do the Infinity Scroll widget. As you can see, set up really, really simple. It's a great effect to use. And this came in as a user submission recently. They'd seen it out there on the web, thought it was cool and sent it to us, and we were able to build a widget around it. So keep those suggestions coming. Thanks again for watching and best of luck with this widget. Cheers.